about that, didn't he? He's not going to be drawn on any uh, any kind of future. So here we go. The first uh, the first final heat, uh, Kovalainen against Schumacher. Now again, this has happened before, and uh, Kovalainen has won 2004. One of the guys he beat on his way to taking yeah. the race of champions, I should say, was was Michael Schumacher. Oh, Schumacher hasn't moved. Unbelievable! Schumacher stalled it on the line. Can you believe it? The embarrassment of a seven times Formula One champion at Wembley, the scene of the great British victory over Germany in 1966, and it's a dozen for Schumacher. I think it's all over. It is now. <laughs> I think he's just stole it. Well, I tell you what he's done. He's done that age-old trick, and it just shows Schumacher hasn't lost any of his competitive instinct. He's gone and parked it for a lap, hoping for a rerun. I don't reckon they'll give him a rerun, but he basically, I reckon, he parked it a bit like he did in Monaco. You know, so he's hoping that they'll stop the session and rerun it. Maybe he can claim a mechanical failure, but uh, no, he's got going now, and uh, he's going to try and put some distance between Kovalainen, who hasn't really got to do anything. This must be very funny for Kovalainen. He's right behind him. He knows he's won because there's no way Schumacher can catch yeah, up. No. So he's just going to harry him all the way around now. Must be tempting. Ooh, just to give him a little bit of a tap. But no, it wouldn't yeah. be too much damage there. It wouldn't, it wouldn't cause too much problem. And, uh, and he doesn't have, Kovalainen doesn't have to drive that car again. Well, trust me, if Kovalainen was a touring car, if he was a touring car driver, he'd be giving him a tap because yeah. then he could say, you know, there I was being held <laughs> up by Michael Schumacher. <laughs> Interesting there because Schumacher is styling it. He's putting it big time sideways just to style it for the crowd. And uh, it just shows that the smoother approach is actually quicker. Yeah, front wheel drive car, Tim, as you'll know. Oh, and Kovalainen adds insult to injury. Well, you're not supposed to be able to overtake here <laughs> at all. Oh, Schumacher must have been pretty nice to him. Well, you know about a bit of bumping and banging as a touring car champion yourself. Tim, go on, you'd be nudging him by now. Oh, I'd have you? put him in the wall, for sure. <laughs> Now, Tim, these cars, though, are must be one of the most difficult ones for them to adapt to because front-wheel drive and power-to-grip ratio, if you like, yeah. probably the most amount of grip for the amount of power they've got. Kovalainen takes the win. Yeah. The biggest win I've ever seen. Yeah, in I've never seen champion. an overtake like that on the line. That was fantastic. <laughs> yep. So it's all down to Sebastian Vettel now. Isn't it? All down to Sebastian Vessel. Yeah, Schumacher can't help. It now means that uh, Finland have won the first heat there. Germany have to win the next two. If uh, if Finland win the next one, they've won. That's it. Yeah, Germany have to... Uh, Vessel has to win yeah. this one. But yeah. the difficulty is, I think... He's up against Gronholm. Yeah. I think he's up against Gronholm in Grom's Holmes World <laughs> Championship car. <laughs> that, that's a big ask. Yeah, it is a big ask. That is a big ask. Which would be good for us, because if it goes to 1-1, we'll have the tie break. Yeah, yeah, we sure will. See, so look at him do it, using the handbrake there for a bit of a, uh, a handbrake turn. And out of the stadium. I yeah, like it. Yeah, it's... Uh, so Schumacher, here this we go. off the line. Oh, no! He was actually holding it on the handbrake, wasn't he? He was holding it on the handbrake. And not enough revs. Stalled it, yeah. Not enough revs. It's this see, now he's sitting there. Let's see. He's now sitting there thinking, oh, <laughs> not my fault. You know, what can I do? And it's this car in particular that what they've tended to do is just bounce it right off the rev limiter, yeah. which is like yeah. a traction control. Yeah. Is that not right? Yeah. Well, what they're doing so he's is got to, he's got to be probably the favorite. If I was a betting man, I'd be putting some money on him. But we're going to show you that here on Eurosport. Been a fantastic Nations Cup. See you soon. Well, welcome back. It's the quarterfinal stages of the Race of Champions. We look through some of the past winners and some of the history of this great event in its 20th year here at Wembley Stadium for the first time ever. Again, what a great year to bring it here. What a great place to bring it to. The now it's to England and the new Wembley Stadium and perhaps arguably the best circuit ever made for indoor. Look at that track. Fantastic track, and those are the quarterfinals. Michael Schumacher against Jensen Button. Sebastian Bourdais versus David Coulthard. So that's France v. Scotland. Bourdais versus Coulthard again. This is individual. No, no nation racing here. This is all individual drivers going for the champion of champions trophy. Yeah, we're at the...
things like literally meditation before he races, and he's really into that kind of power of focus. And uh, sometimes he just is able to determine these results, it seems, purely by almost mind over matter, Tim. It's, it's amazing, really. Well, Kovalainen had a great lead. Wasn't a huge lead, but it was a lead. Well, Some real yeah. scalps. Absolutely, yeah. Well, he had to push, push. He knew he could probably see Tim visually. The gap was bigger than he'd used to been seeing before, so he knew he had to give it everything. And there is no room for error here. And Andy Prio just hooked it up a little bit on the inside there. And uh, we can see a little bit of a, of a gravel trap on the on them, but they're just not getting up to any kind of a speed that will will um, influence that. It's all about mechanical grip. The cars, theoretically, all set up exactly the same. Should just be down to driver talent. So here we go, the first leg of the super final. Schumacher in the red car. Matthias Ekstrom, the reigning champion, in the yellow car. Ekstrom taking a nice wide position on the grid there, maybe a little too wide. A good line into the corner, but is he going to get the kind of traction oh, he wants? Great That's reaction. Ekstrom. Great Gets reaction away. from Brilliant. Ekstrom. Yeah, he was really focused, wasn't he? And he had great reaction time. He was quickest on the first two days that he did. He sat in the car. Oh, and there you go, a comprehensive first leg victory for Matthias Ekstrom by one of just over one and a half seconds. Uh, you know, and considering he's won the German Touring Car Championship twice, uh, he's been in that kind of competition, that's pretty, you know, he obviously is very proud of what he's achieved before. Yeah, it is. You know, you look at it, you're sitting there, you're lined up next to Michael Schumacher. As far as champion of champions in the race of champions is concerned. They get the engine revs filled up, this is it, Michael Schumacher has to win it, and away they go! It's quite close into the first corner. Matthias Ekstrom pointed out earlier on that is so easily lost. Only well, wrong because it looks like as he extended the leader into the same. Oh, bring out the Fiat's, or they could bring out. Well, no, look, it's definitely yeah. the solution. F cars, that's what they're going to. Schumacher's not happy. He says, I don't like these cars. Can we go out in the rock? Sorry, Schumi. That's the deal. Let's see how they get on after the break. As I predicted, Schumacher wasn't happy to go into the solution F cars, which he, 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 he's just lost in and knows they're similar to mini DTM cars. He came out and he said, can we change the cars? Can I drive the yellow car and you drive the red one? And uh, there was a very interesting exchange. Schumacher back in fully competitive mode, um, not willing to be uh, uh, beaten when the odds were stacked against him. Ekstrom, to his credit, said, you have whichever car you like, mate, and I'll still take you on. Schumacher said, well, how about we do it again in the rock buggies then? <laughs> That's right, I like the rock buggies. And of course, the organizers were saying, oh, the cars are the same, but racing drivers are no. racing drivers. Yeah. And it's physically impossible to make everything ex you know, exactly Double the same. Line did that. And uh, final leg, they're one leg all, the red lights are on, Ekstrom against Schumacher. Oh, remember now it is Michael Schumacher in the red car, and uh, Matthias, no, Michael Schumacher in the yellow car, <laughs> Matthias Ekstrom in the red car. In the lead, he's just got the sprint to the line, Schumacher's lost it! And celebrates with a burnout to end all burnouts. <laughs> Get a more competitive series than that. And Matthias Ekstrom proves why he's been so good in his touring car career uh, by taking yet another victory. And pretty darn good at burnouts, too, without hitting anything. Yeah, there you go. It just goes on.